an education story of Annie. Annie finally became a mother in her thirties, and it was a bit thrilling for her as a new mom. Her son was born weak and ill, and was hospitalized again and again. Half a year after the birth of her son, he still cried all night and was so skinny that even Annie's mother lost her confidence. The old woman couldn't help but repeat it: "This child won't live for a long time." But Annie never gave up. She took a long vacation to give her child wholehearted care. One year later. Her son was out of danger and was recovering fast. There was an unspeakable joy in Annie's heart, but her sons told her that all the love should have a clear direction. That was to cultivate the child to become an excellent person. Annie's education philosophy was unique. She thought that the key to educating was to develop the child's personality, not his knowledge. The most important thing in cultivating personality was to form his independence and survival abilities. She often said to her son, "Learning without supervision is your own business. Survival is also your own skill. No matter what, you should never betray yourself. Being responsible is the least responsibility of a man." Annie and her husband made a deal that their child should be given open education. Like developed countries since childhood, and would never wrap up everything as most parents would do. Annie started work again when her son entered kindergarten. She was busy. Her husband, a writer, further studied at Peking University. When their little son left the kindergarten at 5 p.m., he had no idea where his mother was. The reason why Annie did this was probably related to the tutoring she received in her childhood. Her parents had very little control over her, and they let her grow up freely. Therefore, she thought that this was a good way. When the son entered primary school, as a mother, Annie accompanied him to school for the first day, and then sent him to the classroom. According to her son, Annie only took him to school on the first day, and it never happened again. That night, Annie said to her son earnestly, "Today you already know the way to school." From now on, we won't pick you up and see you off again. First, I'm busy with my work, and second, there is no need at all. Annie was true to her word. She insisted on letting her son go home alone. When it rained lightly, he ran barefoot, and when the rain got heavier, he hid under others' umbrellas. Annie never tutored his homework. When her son had difficulties doing his homework. She would let him ask his teacher and classmates. She said to her son, "You should learn to get answer and help all by yourself. The sooner, the better. This is also a very important survival ability." Finn, Annie's son, a young international student, is now studying in England. Studying abroad is a deliberative decision between parents and children. Parents contribute money, and the children make hard efforts. From visa application to approval, Finn handled it all alone. Finn said, "My mother's education on me is mainly spiritual. In other respects, she makes me independent as much as possible. So it's not difficult for me to adapt to a new environment." Annie is a brilliant mother. She didn't spoil Finn or took care of Finn like servant. Instead. She trained Finn and finally made him an excellent and independent big boy.